like minded people who are interested in creating awareness and creating community which is uh, well informed and so that everybody can take their decisions with proper guidance and proper knowledge so uh, we have collaborated with nuclear power corporation of india limited for creating an awareness program on nuclear energy the green energy and clean energy so uh, as part of the program we are we have already announced several contests elocution contest painting contest slogan writing contest and there is one more contest which is quiz contest which is going to be online the la, the last date for the contest was 30th july but we are still further extending it till 6th of august so all those and there's no limit to number of participants so all can participate the participation link will be shared with all of you and all the students who are attending this lecture here from the auditorium and also we will be having the people joining us on zoom platform those who are not able to make it to come over here they will be joining us on zoom platform and also we are going facebook live so uh this way we'll try to reach maximum pe uh, maximum people and create awareness on this very very important topic we all know that energy demand is the uh sign of progress or development of a country so in a short while from now we'll uh, go live and i request our director shri umesh kumar to please come and introduce the speaker today and welcome the all the audience and the speaker as well so good morning good morning when is auditorium is full of such young residents the sound should be large enough it seems that forcibly you are sitting here say good morning yeah just like when you are in class and teacher is not there the way you shout maybe sometime and it should be good enough okay so uh, manjula ma'am uh, has already told you about the genesis of the program perhaps how many of you heard about uh, agenda 2030 agenda 2030 okay uh, you might have heard recently that our pm uh, has gone to some meeting and we have committed that uh, we have to reduce our carbon footprint you might be i know oh, students are quite busy nowadays because of their school setup but thing is uh, if you go sometime to the, to through the news or newspaper you might have heard that last 10 years maximum number of vote years if you will go through they were among the last decade this year july i think uh, we had longest uh, uh, what do you call summer you can say and the temperature is day by day increasing we are up to june we had deficit of rain in july we are surplus and we have three two more months at least to go august and september so far as monsoon is concerned the point i want to make is climate change which we all are facing the one of the reason is you know global warming um, uh, all those things uh, they are playing crucial role so how we have to fight we are fighting you people have to fight more so somebody have to find a, a solution also for that what can be done one of the important concern is about power we are all facing may you are in mumbai so many of you may not be facing but those who are from rural areas or they have come from far remote places they are still facing if you go through data perhaps we have around 6 lakhs villages though we have claimed that most of them but still i think there is a huge number of villages where they are still without power how to cope up with that we have to reduce our carbon footprint we have to thermal power is i think jensa will tell you about that uh, more than 68% we are still getting that so we have to find some viable option which is environment friendly which is clean and which can last longer also so that's why we and uh, 
another thing is we are celebrating as manjula ma'am told azadi ka amrit mahotsav and we are we are completing now 75 years of independence so this is one of the uh, robust program so far as india's independence is concerned nuclear power program uh, so we have tied up with the uh, nuclear power corporation of india limited uh, to have this program specially to create awareness about nuclear power there are many myths many uh things you uh, you might have been told about that because reason is the very first encounter of nuclear power power means i'm not talking about this power that power which is in a atom atom bomb so people have very bad impression about that so you know you wo kehte na jo first impression is last impression sometimes so when you remember that hiroshima nagasaki so sometimes we are afraid of that so some apprehensions are always there but there are uh but uh, uh so many things are there we have series of lectures one we have already done on nuclear power and environment those who can get opportunity i think sometime npcl also does if you can visit some place around nuclear power plant you will find that such a wonderful environment they have created in their surroundings i have opportunity uh, to visit uh, kota it's fantastic the birds in fact we have shown in our gallery also uh you can uh, go through now we will be renovating that because it was done in 2009 onwards and it inaugurated in 2011 with uh, quite active support from shri ak jain so uh, we'll listen him uh, i'll introduce him uh, before that i will request him uh, to come on the dais sir and i'll invite uh, um gesu singh ji gesu gesu singh ya yeah, to welcome shri ak jain with the uh, ported plant that's again about the environment that's what we do at uh, science center we present not bouquets or some there these are the plants to create more awareness about the environment thank you gesu so and now i'll just briefly introduce uh, before that i'll say mr ak jain has been uh, quite instrumental so far as our nuclear power uh, gallery is there. we have a hall of nuclear power it is uh, it was inaugurated in 2011 he played very actively role because that was it is the it was the first hall for public to see what nuclear power is how we can make it more viable what are different aspects of it what are myths all those things so he was very instrumental in that uh, apart from that he is basically a chemist and recently retired from npcl as chief engineer corporate communication was overall in charge of implementing public awareness activities as npcl he has implemented various innovative public awareness programs in simple and interesting manner for various sections of the society for improving public acceptance towards nuclear power out of his passion for nuclear power he intends to talk to public and spread awareness even after super invasion he had completed 35 years of service in nuclear power corporation of india limited those who want to know about this company more sometime they can google so one of the sometime navratan companies or something wonderful company it's uh, run by uh, from government of india only under uh, that he has over 20 years of experience of working in nuclear power plants with chemistry background as expertise in boiling water treatment and in condenser cooling water treatment with this brief introduction i'll request shri alok kumar jain to take over and start his lecture and we are live also on facebook so those who are maybe uh, rajesh later on if some can at the end we will take some those who have the question they can write write down you can give the slips to us or at the end maybe we can have some three four questions or maybe more also that depends on you okay sir over good morning thank you mr omesh rastogi sir actually uh, i have come uh, over here um, uh, earlier occasion also this so this is a very familiar platform to me i have given many presentation and when uh, nehru science center invited me for a presentation i immediately accepted this one there are two reasons number one i have passion for nuclear power because there are various merits which i am going to tell in my presentation second thing i want to interact with i love to interact with the children their enthusiasm their curiosity 
and their youthfulness gives me a lot of energy. So always I uh, grab that opportunity to interact with the children. And uh, just uh, before starting my presentation, so I, I, I because um, uh, 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 children of uh, 10th standard or below that are there, so I will keep my presentation very simple, number one. And it will be interactive also. So I will ask in between some question also. So you all have to be very alert. Anytime I can ask anybody, it will be simple. Okay, we will enjoy. Okay, uh, both of us will enjoy. So I will start my presentation. That uh, as I told that uh, my uh, topic is nuclear power and inevitable option. So here, as Mr. Rastogi has told, that nuclear power doesn't mean that an atom bomb. Here, nuclear power means uh, generation of electricity from the nuclear energy. Okay, there are various ways of uh, electricity generation. One of them is nuclear energy. So with that one, how electricity is produced, we will discuss. So uh, just as told that I am AK Jain, former chief engineer, uh, nuclear power, NPCI, Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited, which is in design, construction, operation of uh, new uh, uh, operation of nuclear power plants across the country. And uh, there are uh, almost uh, 22 nuclear power plants operating in our country, and uh, gradual share of the nuclear power is increasing. So we will. What are the various merits of nuclear power, and why it is a good option that we will discuss. So we know that first uh, that electricity. What is electricity? Electricity is a form of energy. We know that they are a chemical energy, that chemical energy, nuclear energy, mechanical energy, thermal energy, and uh, uh, our. Uh, uh, our radiant energy and various forms are there. So it is another form of electricity. It is another form of uh, energy. So what is electricity? Can anybody tell? Electricity. Electricity, as I told, it is a form of energy. So uh, when we uh, complete a circuit, so electrons flows from one direction to uh, another direction. So conventional flow of current is opposite that. So that is electricity. It is the most convenient form of electricity. For example, how it is uh, so convenient that I will tell you, for example, in the peak winter, say in the month of December, you are in New Delhi and in a room, temperature is say two degree, three degree centigrade. It is very cold. So another op one option had been that you keep one small, our uh, uh, this thing, cigarette at one place and fill it with coal and burn it. So what will happen? You will get a lot of heat and that, that, will, that will make you comfortable overnight. But we don't do that because it is not very convenient. See, ultimately, you are getting thermal energy, it is keeping you warm, but you are not using that energy. What do you do? You plug one electric heater, switch on for six hours, seven hours. And when you get up, you switch it off. So it is very convenient. Whereas, have you used that uh, heating uh, coal, other thing, then a lot of ash would, would have been generated, smoke would have been generated, and uh, arranging coal and other things, it is very inconvenient. With the switch, uh, you can switch it on, you can switch, switch it off. So, it is very convenient. It is a versatile form of energy. You cannot imagine life without electricity. From charging of a mobile to running big trains and uh, everywhere, everywhere you find that electricity is used. Electricity is used in the agriculture, in industries, in commercial use, and everywhere. So, so, uh, but, so, but electricity, but where we are, actually this is the government of India has given our plan that uh, year-wise, how much growth in installed capacity. Okay, just, uh, uh, you know that uh, one bulb, it is a 40 watt. So what is the watt? Watt is actually one joule per second. Okay, so it is actually it is capacity that is it's a capacity is there like that it is this bulb is uh, absorbing energy, whereas in a power plant it is the capacity with which it can generate electricity. That is the only thing. Otherwise it is same. So we normally we tell in the terms of megawatt or uh, kilowatt or gigawatt. So one kilowatt is. Uh, one megawatt is thousand uh, uh, kilowatt. Okay, thousand watt. Okay, and one gigawatt is equal to thousand megawatt. So this is the normally thermal power plants. Other plants are up two hundred uh, megawatt, uh, and then uh, five hundred megawatt, thousand megawatt, fifteen hundred megawatt. Like that, they are uh, in capacity. They are explained. So it is gigawatt. One gigawatt is thousand megawatt. So this is our plan. Government of India has given that in year 2011-12 it will be 220 gigawatt and 2020-21 it will be 
it will be around 425 megawatt it is presently it is around 200 and 403 gigawatt okay slightly but we will make up and by 2031 32 we want to reach to 800 gigawatt one important thing i will tell you when india got independence in 1947 so india and china both were having around 1500 megawatt see this is gigawatt so 1500 megawatt means uh, 1.5 gigawatt you can say okay so th that was the capacity but gradually see we have reached up to this place 1500 to 4 to 5 0, 0, 0 megawatt gradually okay and uh, and at uh, that time india uh, uh, the, uh, that uh, i told that it was 1500 megawatt china was also having 1500 megawatt but china electricity they re they realized early that uh, electricity is a very useful thing for development economic development of any country is seen how much electricity production is there how much electricity is consumed in the country so what we want to achieve in 2000 uh, by 31 32 that is 800 mega 800 gigawatt they have that they have uh, achieved that thing in 2010 itself so they are almost uh, 12 15 years ahead of us some there are various reasons that we are lagging behind but gradually we are picking up last 10 years our installed capacity has gone high okay so so i understand I, I understand that you have understood what is the installed capacity that see 1000 megawatt capacity uh, any thermal power plant nuclear power plant or elect hydroelectric power plants anything 1000 cap uh, megawatt capacity it will uh, double uh, give 240 lakhs of units of electricity uh, in one day okay so uh, electricity is electricity whether it is generated from any of the source okay so this one has to understand so how electricity see in our india in any country there is a basket of uh, uh, various sources with that way we generate electricity and there is a it after generation then electrical connections are there we call it grid uh, then it is transmitted and it is distributed to different places so there are various sources as a, 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 one is non renewables that is fossil fuels the coal oil and natural gas and then we have got renewable that is solar wind and biomass and geothermal and many other things are there and then we have hydrogen and nuclear fuel also so i i i think i uh, don't need to explain what is uh, non renewable and renewable because in social science uh, that uh, is the government of india policy then the, from the first standard itself itself that on the environment one topic should be there up to 12th standard so they teach us in the first standard it will be very simple but gradually it will build up so uh, you know and know what is renewable and what is re uh, non-renewable. So I will not go into further uh, this, uh, details of this. So this is how electricity is produced. As I told that electricity is used everywhere. Here also we are using electricity. So the electricity is nothing but only flow of electrons. From one source, electron flows and uh, goes, goes back to the, that source itself. And current is flows in the opposite direction. Okay. So how it is electricity is produced? Can anybody explain this? How we hear electricity is being produced? This is coal. It is burnt in a furnace. Then heat is generated. Then heat with this heat, this is our uh, 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 boiler. This is our uh, this is our uh, boiler. Two components are there. This is a cold one and this is a hotter one. Here, that uh, water is uh, heated up. It turns into steam. Okay. And then the steam it goes to turbine. From turbine, the generator is connected. In the general generator, electricity is produced and it is distributed. And then again, when uh, uh, then it steams, again it condenses back in a condenser, it goes back again here. Okay. And from here, uh, again it is heated up uh, uh, with this coal, continuous supply of coal is there, heated up, and again it will heated up. So the continuous circuit is there. Okay. Understood how electricity is generated now. Because uh, ultimately in the nuclear power plant also, it is a similar way. It will be, uh, electricity will be generated. So ultimately, from ultimately, electricity is produced here it goes so ultimately electricity will be same as i told from thermal power plant nuclear power plant hydroelectric electric power plant it is same then our where we are presently so our total in our basket as i told various sources are there renewables and non-renewables hydro nuclear and many other things 
So 50% uh, of our uh, electricity generated is by coal, burning up coal. You uh, burn coal, you generate heat, and then you uh, uh, generate steam. Then steam uh, rotates turbine. Turbine is a generator connect hota hai, and electricity is produced. Hydroelectric say 12%. Okay. And then with the nuclear share is less presently, 1.7. Government, our government intend to increase uh, it because uh, because it is a uh, base load station, okay, and uh, it is continuous source from gas it is 6.2 and renewables presently this is solar and wind it is 28 percent that is the total share. Our as I told our installed capacity presently is 403 gigawatt. Now there are various merits and demerits of each power, each generating source that we will discuss in short. Thermal power, as I told, it is a major contributor around 50 percent. Okay, and then uh, because of coal, and then we have uh, other uh, Excuse me, sir. and other sources. Also. The order is not clear. Source of power supply. See, there are certain things. You say uh, our uh, electric bill or <laughs> that they need continuous supply. They, we cannot stop it. They need 24 into uh, 7 uh, base supply that uh, uh, because suppose uh, somewhere surgery is going is going on, suddenly electricity goes off. Then it is not acceptable. It has to be there. So they are stable. Means you go on pulling, go on putting coal, it will generate steam and generate electricity. So they are stable source of electricity. But coal is depleting fast. We have uh, total resources for next say 50 years. Okay. And then uh, and most of the 80 percent of coal is we are importing our in India whatever coal we are getting it is it has got low calorific value okay and then uh, the, the resources are also less so we are importing so we Per year, uh, temperature rise of the uh, world, uh, of the, of the uh, environment was 0 0.008 degrees centigrade. And from 1980 onwards, it has doubled. So 0 0.016 degree uh, centigrade per year. So that uh, almost uh, um, in 100 years, one degree temperature has increased. So this is global warming. You know that uh, it, uh, there are various uh, effects of global warming that everywhere we know that glaciarism, glacier is melting and because of the melting of the glacier and uh, that water is comes to the river and from the river flooding is taking place and that river water goes to the sea and from this uh, then uh, means uh, sea level is increasing and may most and many of the islands coastal area they are getting submerged after some time that coastal some of the island they may they are disappearing and they might may disappear after some time so this is not acceptable because of the global warming we are uh, that our uh, the, this is also taking place uh, fire in the uh, our forest and then a storm means a storm also also taking place so it is worldwide realized that global warming uh, has very many uh, catastrophic effect it's, it has to be stopped so government, so all governments altogether world have decided that from the pre-industrial period, whatever temperature was there, so that, that temperature we have to restrict to maximum to 1.5 uh, degrees centigrade uh, by the um, by the end of the century. Okay, so that is to be controlled. Uh, if we not do not do, then catastrophic uh, changes will be there. And government of India has also commitment uh, that we have to uh, uh, adopt clean sources for this one okay and then coal uh, because coal with this one transportation issues there storage issues are the very uh, various issues are there so gradually our government has decided by 2070 by 2070 uh, th there will be zero carbon emission ultimately you burn coal carbon is uh, carbon dioxide is emitted it goes to the atmosphere and then uh, from that one uh, greenhouse effect uh, it takes place so, and that is why that is how the temperature of the earth increases. So, by 2017, we have to stop all the uh, carbon dioxide emission to the environment. America is number one carbon dioxide polluter, China is number two uh, polluter. Okay. 
So no, India is also pollutant. It is at the number three. Um, U, uh, European Union and India, uh, they are number three and number four uh, polluted to environment. Okay, so that has to be controlled. Gradually, it has to be controlled. We have to bring down the carbon dioxide emission. So by 2030, by 2030, our total uh, that uh, clean sources share should be 50 percent. We have to bring down to uh, 50 percent. As it is presently 70 percent, 75 percent, we have to bring to 50 percent. And by 2070, it should be only clean sources. Electricity generation by only by the clean sources. Hydel, Hydel I forgot to explain that what is hydel power. I know that you are all aware. Still, hydel power is generation of electricity using hydro uh, by the through the uh, hydel energy, hydroelectric. Hydel means hydroelectric. What happens? As I told, that uh, turbine in a thermal power plant is rotated with the help of steam. But now, how in hydel power uh, in hydel plant that from the that the uh, potential energy of the water is from the high uh, thing and that water falls on the turbine and turbine rotates and then generator is coupled with that one so electric is produced so this is so actually these are clean sources this is cheapest cost effective third largest so, uh, third largest source uh, also and it is but most of the dams uh, where that electricity can be generated using hydro that have been exploited now that uh, uh, new hydroelectric power plants will come up smaller capacity, say 50 megawatt or around that. Level. It is intermittent. Whenever uh, river flow is there, whenever water is there, that time electricity can be generated. Whenever water falls over the turbine, that time electricity produced. Otherwise, uh, there will be when the water and there is no uh, river flow, then uh, or a dam is uh, water is not there, then electricity cannot be produced. And because of the storage of water, lot of uh, land is submerged and around the river and dam that land is very fertile so that we are losing good fertile land and uh, uh, see uh, ultimately people are also have to be relocated from that place to another place. Now renewables. Renewables means generation of electricity using solar, wind, uh, geothermal and many other things. So it is a clean and green. It looks very clean and green. Ultimately, you put one solar panel, sunlight falls over that one electricity to be. And whenever this is this is wind turbine, and because of the wind, this turbine rotates and generator is there. From this generator, electricity is produced. So, it is, so ultimately, it is renewable because ultimately air falls over there and then it goes up. So nothing nothing is lost. Only turbine is rotated. Okay. 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 And then it is. Untapped potential. Gradually, share of uh, renewables are increasing worldwide, okay. and it is intermittent and non-reliable. So presently, uh, till that time, it had been thought that it is in, whenever in the daytime, when sunlight falls over the solar panel, so electricity will produce. In the night time, it cannot be done. When cloudy time is there, electricity cannot be produced. Similarly, when wind, wind blows, that time only electricity can be produced from this one. Other it cannot be. Done. And for this one, large, huge, uh, because it is a low intensity source, solar and wind are low intensity source. So you need a uh, lot of solar panels, lot many solar panels, lot many wind bills, then electricity can be produced. And uh, it was thought of, the agency thought that they are not suitable for industry. Okay, but gradually technology is developing. Yeah, because, see, in a daytime you can uh, generate uh, electricity from this one, but night time it is not there. So they have to be stored. From this power, it is to be stored. So that as the storing capacity and technology is developing, so this is going to play a very important role. Okay. And huge land requirement. Again, as I told, nuclear power. Nuclear power, as I told, is electricity generation using nuclear energy. So we have, uh, you know, we know fission. So what is fission? I 
Pardon? Vision is when you break a particle to generate a big force that you can use to generate electricity. They know the right answer at the same time they have courage to explain also. Okay, so right, rightly she has, she has tried her best to explain, but I will make it further clear that the chemical reaction, their exchange of electrons takes place. We know that there is a nucleus and around that one uh, neutrons are revolving in a different orbits. So when, when electron is ejected from uh, the orbit, so that is a chemical reaction. For example, sodium atom is there. 281 structure is there. One, one atom, uh, one nuclear, uh, one electron goes up. So it becomes sodium ion. So, okay, so the chemical reaction. But in any chemical reaction, inside the nucleus, nothing happens. Nucleus is very tight, compact energy source, energy, this one bundle of energy. So it, that, uh, that cannot be broken like a chemical reaction. By mixing acid and alkali and other reaction by burning, nuclear remain intact. When you do bombardment with neutron or something, or you split it, or you fuse the two small nuclei, then nuclear reaction takes place. So simple words, in a chemical reaction, only exchange of electrons takes place. In a nuclear reaction, that inside the nuclear, some changes are taking place. Fission, fusion, uranium-235 converts to parts, uranium-238 converts into plutonium, and many other things are there. Hydrogen and helium, they mix and fuse. So fusion reaction, so that is the inside the nuclear, very good. So this is a, our fusion reaction, this is a uranium atom, uranium-235, what is 235? This is mass number, number of proton plus number of neutrons, okay. When it, uh, with the collides, and nu when a thermal neutron collides with the uranium, it splits, then it converts into two fragments and 200 electron uh, MeV uh, energy is released and two to three neutrons are produced. Okay, this is nuclear reaction, fission reaction. Again, I will explain. Uranium-235 bombarded with the uh, thermal neutron. It is an unstable state. Then again, it splits into two fragments and then three neutrons are produced and a lot of energy is produced. This is fission. Okay, then what happens? This this elect this neutrons, their neutron again bombard another uranium-235 atom. It is splits. So it is a continuous reaction. It is, we call it a chain reaction. Okay. So it goes on. So this uh, this I told just uh, in an um, th how a nuclear power plant work in a thermal power plant. I told that coal is burned, then uh, steam is generated. In a, it is also similar way. You can assume it is also similar uh, technology. But here we don't use coal. What we use? Nuclear fuel, uranium. There are certain uh, nuclear nucleus which fissions, which breaks up all nuclear. For example, iron is there, sodium is there. Zinc is there. If you bombard it with a neutron, it does not split. But uranium-235 is split. Plutonium-239 uh, plutonium is also split. There are some fissionable material that in next slide we will explain. So what will happen? Here nuclear fission takes place inside the reactor vessel. This is a big vessel where nuclear uh, fission takes place. 
and with this one, as I told that 200 MeV energy is produced, and it is a continuous process. Fission is a continuous process. So what happens? That heat is generated, water is heated up, it goes here, and then again, this is a steam generator. It transfers its heat to the steam generator. It cools down and again comes back. Again, this water gets heated up. And again, this continuously sustained. The pump is here, pump is there. And this pressurizer is there to keep this system pressurized so that this system remains in the liquid form. It does not convert into steam. Okay. So again, you, so this is a re reactor where nuclear fission is taking place. And then heat is generated. And this is water. And then uh, this water converts into steam. It goes to steam generator. In the steam generator, it cools down. And then again, this cold water again enter here. And this water here, pressure is less. So this steam generator, steam generator, is, its name imply, implies that it generates steam. So here, steam is produced. Steam goes to turbine. Turbine uh, is connected to the generator. And then electricity is produced. It is distributed. And here, this uh, after uh, doing work on the turbine, this uh, condenses, condenses, uh, condenses, and it is cooled by the uh, our uh, river water, sea water, again to further cool, cool down. So then again, it is goes back to steam generator. Again, it is heated up. So there are three circuits. You can see. I think uh, you are able to understand it, no? Because I am explaining in a very simplest form. This thing is that after one hour lecture or uh, my presentation. Some message should go, though, though everything is available in Google and everything. But from here, some message should go. You should retain something in mind that uh, I have understood what is electricity, what are different sources of electricity generation, what is nuclear power, what is thermal power, and how uh, why clean power is required. So this is very simplest form I am explaining. So this is primary circuit. This is secondary circuit. This is tertiary circuit. So no, normally people have uh, some uh, apprehension that from a nuclear power plant radiation is uh, uh, released, okay, and then uh, it causes harmful effects to the public. So this here itself I will explain that this is reactor. This is our uh, uh, our uh, reactor vessel, which is inside a wall. This is our uh, reactor building. It is double wall. Two walls are there. Here pressure is negative pressure. Uh, from the atmosphere here slightly negative pressure is there. So activity uh, will not, uh, from the environment, suppose some radioactivity is released in the um, uh, reactor building, it will not go outside because it is negative pressure. Only outside, uh, uh, this one, uh, air will come inside here. So from the air route, there is no possibility, from this air route, there is no possibility of going any radiation outside the bar. First of all, the radiation does not, minimum radiation comes out from the this primary loop system. Okay. So, one route is there and the other route is that water. So I told that whatever radioactivity uh, is generated, radioactive substance are generated because of fission. Fission takes place, some, definitely some radioactive substance will be generated. So this radioactive substance will remain in this loop itself. And there are IX column, they will remove radioactivity also. Okay. And from here, there is no possibility, there is no possibility of coming this radioactive substance from primary loop to the secondary loop. Okay, this second loop. And this is a, our uh, reservoir, say for river, dam, or uh, our seawater cooled circuit is there. So there is no possibility that uh, any activity from this thing will come to the in one in the, in the water loop. Okay. And second thing, this is our uh, base and that foundation is so strong that from the uh, our ground route, from the terrestrial route, there is no chance of radioactivity going out. So whatever remains there, it will remain, first of all, remain inside this one only and in the minimum quantity. So it is safest. Reactor building, reactor is safest. We should keep in mind that our reactors, worldwide all reactors are very safe. So this is very important. Nuclear material. So no, normally there are three <coughs> material used in a reactors for as a fuel. One is uranium-235, uh, then uh, uranium-238 and thorium-232. Uranium has two isotopes, uranium-235 and 238. Okay, 235 is mass number, 238 is mass number. De depends on the number of uh, neutrons, these uh, mass numbers are differing. So uranium-235 is fissile material, means 
when it bombards with the thermal neutrons, slow neutron, it fissions. Okay, so this is the first. This is the only naturally occurring um, fissile material. And uranium two thirty five. This is point, uranium two thirty five is only point seven percent. This one has to understand. It is very simple. First of all, don't get confused. This is a very simple thing. And based on this one, uh, Doctor Bhava has given a three stage nuclear power program. That I will tell you. And what is the potential? What is the importance of that? The three stage nuclear power program. Uh, that uh, in the next slide I will explain. So first of all, we have to understand. Then you can understand three stage nuclear power program. So I told that uranium two thirty five. It is a fissile material. It, it can directly be used in a nuclear reactor for fission. It will generate heat. It will generate steam. It will rotate turbine. Okay. Uranium two thirty five. It is not a fissile material. This is only 0.7 percent uranium 235. Remaining 99.3 uh, percent is uranium 238. Okay, but this is not fissile. If you bombard with the neutron directly, the thermal neutron, it will not fissile. Okay, but it can be converted into plutonium 239, another isotope. This is fissile. Likewise, thorium is there. Thorium 232. This is also not fissile, but it can be converted into uranium 233. This is fissile. So there are total three fissile materials. Okay, there are I have explained there are total three fissile material. Number one, natural occurring two thirty five. You understood? This is not fissile. This is not fissile. But it is converted into plutonium two thirty nine and uranium two thirty three. So there are three fissile material. Number one, number two, and number three. Okay, this we can use in reactor as a nuclear fuel. Okay, so uh, in the different stages, uh, they they are used as a uh, nuclear fuel. In the first stage, uranium two thirty five; second stage, plutonium two thirty nine; and third stage, uranium two thirty three is used. Uh, actually, one uh, we, we have uh, uh, uranium reserves. We have got modest reserves. We are we have to import for our nuclear reactors also present nuclear reactors also we have to import uranium because. Uh, a present uh, uranium availability with this one, it can support our uh, reactors for next 35 years of 10,000 megawatts capacity. It means if we create nuclear reactors of uh, uranium-based uh, fuel, then 10,000 megawatt capacity, uh, we go on uh, fueling them. Then it, our uranium reserves will like next 35 years. Okay, so we have to import most of it. But thoriums, worlds. Two third thorium is available with us, highest. But directly we cannot use thorium in our reactor. It has to be converted into uranium two thirty three. Okay, if if we are able to use this thorium as a fuel in our reactor, when we achieve our maturity in our three stage program, then it can meet our energy demand for next two hundred years. Just imagine, our coal will last in thirty forty years, and that also uh, whenever seventy uh, percent coal we are importing. Worldwide coal also will last around next fifty years. Okay, or otherwise whatever coal in the mines will be remaining, it will be un. I mean, um, uh, it may not be viable in future to exploit that one. Okay, but if we use nuclear, then this thing can meet our requirement for next two hundred years if we use thorium. Okay. So this is our three stage nuclear power program. Doctor Bhava has given this vision in nineteen fifties. The, in the first stage, you use natural uranium fuel. Uranium has got two isotope. I told uranium two thirty five. I will ask this. Some uh, somebody has to explain this three stage nuclear power program. I am telling it is very simple. Three stage nuclear power program. Natural uranium in the first stage reactor we use. Of present reactors in India, uh, worldwide, worldwide all reactors are working uh, on uranium. Okay, either natural uranium. Or induced uranium. Okay, in India, our PSWR reactors are working on natural uranium. So uranium, their two thirty five percent is point seven percent. Uranium two thirty eight is ninety nine point three percent. Okay, so what happens? Uranium two thirty five when it is bombarded with the neutron, it splits. It gives energy. It gives heat. It gives combustion. And uranium two thirty eight, it is not fissionable material as I told, but it absorbs neutron. And it converts into plutonium two thirty nine. Okay, so what happens here? Uranium two thirty five fissions. Okay, 
and then uranium 238 converts into plutonium 239 which is fissile material and that fissile material from the first stage is extracted after uh, some time and then it is put in the second stage type of reactors fast bead reactors in kalpakkam fast bead reactors uh, one test reactor is uh, uh, there uh, and another fast bead reactor of 500 megawatt is coming up is under uh, commissioning more uh, reactors will come like that so plutonium 239 is uh, taken from here it put in the second uh, in the second stage reactor and so it is a it is a fuel it fissions it gives energy it gives uh, uh, it operates reactor and at the same time we do blanketing of uranium 238 in the second stage so plutonium gives uh, energy and uranium 238 it converts into plutonium 239 so it means that uranium plutonium 239 it is uh, used up as fuel at the same time more plutonium is generated from the uranium 238 you got my point okay so this is something like that in the thermal power plant you burn coal and it is uh, converting into ash but such type of thermal power plant that more and more coal is also generated it never happens means fuel is burning and it is generating more fuel it is happening in the, this one plutonium 239 is burning but at the same time it is giving more plutonium 239 from the uranium 238 when we have got sufficient plutonium 239 then we separate as fuel and second type of more reactors of second stage we fast media reactors we we will operate okay and then sufficient plutonium is generated then we put it here thorium 232 is another isotope in the last slide i have told you thorium 232 so this thorium 232 converts into batai uranium 233 which is fissile material so here uranium 230 more more uh, uh, our hamare paas hamare paas we have got more fuel so uranium 233 we put here in the th third stage so uranium 233 is a fuel here and we uh, blanketed the uranium 232 here so uranium 232 with the neutron it converts into uranium 233 okay so uranium uh, th uh, yeah. so what will happen here uranium 233 is a fissile material and thorium 232 which we have put up put there as a blanket it converts into uranium 233 so here also fuel is burning at the same time more fuel is also the nuclear fuel is generated here plutonium is generated here is uranium 233 is generated so that is why we will uh, we uh, uh, our three stage nuclear power program we will be using thorium vast reserves of thorium two third of thorium which we have got in the india of world's reserve that will be using up here it will meet our electricity it will give us energy security for next 200 years clear this one so as i told that uh, when you burn coal is a chemical reaction so there very small amount of uh, energy is generated 13.1 electron volt but when you uh, nuclear fission it gives 200 mev we have seen the fission reaction okay so from the fission of one uh, atom of uranium 235 million times uh, million times energy is generated that is the difference between a chemical reaction and a nuclear reaction so this is so as i told it's a and uh, nucleus is a power source power bank okay so if uh, you uh, for 1 million unit electricity generation 1 million means 10 lakh units of electricity you know what is a unit uh, 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 at our residence we get uh, electricity bill okay so we ab hamare ghar mein kya parents baat karte hain re is bar electricity ka bill samaro bahut aage is bhi bahut bachcho ne chalaya 500 unit aage 1000 unit aage to hum bolte na unit aage one unit kya hota hai kya hota one unit hum bole bill bill aata na sabke ghar mein electricity bill aata hai kisi ghar mein nahi aata kisi ghar mein free mein electric supply aati hai aata hai na kisi ne dekha hai electric bijli ka bill ghar mein aata hai ha kitna aata hai batai aapke ghar mein kitna bill aata hai ha batai aap 500 data hai acha theek hai to usme kitna unit likha rehta hai unit kaise measure karte hain ghar mein jo electricity ka bill aata hai usme unit kaise measure karte hain batai मतलब हमको जब बिल आता है ना उसमें बिजली का कितना यूनिट कंजम्पशन हुआ वो कैसे देखते हैं हने कैसे देखते हैं कहां कोई मीटर वगैरह लगा रहता है घर में क्या लगा रहता है 
हाँ। एक इलेक्ट्रिक मीटर रहता है वो क्या करता है पिछले महीने की रीडिंग से इस महीने की रीडिंग घटा के दिखाता है कि कितना हुआ है ना तो बताइए आपका जैसे कुछ इनके बताया कि हंड्रेड यूनिट आया है ना हंड्रेड यूनिट किया तो वन यूनिट क्या होता है नहीं आपने कपड़े प्रेस करने एक घंटा चलाया तो आपका जो घर में जो इलेक्ट्रिक मीटर है ना वो एक यूनिट बढ़ जाएगा ठीक है और एक मिनट यूनिट की कीमत पांच रुपए आठ रुपए दस रुपए ऐसा वेरी करती है ऐसा ठीक है एक यूनिट बढ़ जाएगा तो वन क्लोवाट आवर इज द यूनिट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कंजम्पन ठीक है वन यूनिट भी कॉल इट अब बताइए अपना जो जो अपना एसी रहता है वो कितने किलोवाट का रहता है किसी को मालूम है घर में सब चीजें हम इतनी पढ़ाई कर रहे हैं और जो घर में जो चीजें अवेलेबल हैं और जो हमको कंसर्न करती है तो हमको वो चीजें जानना चाहिए ना बताइए क्या होता है एक घर में जो ए रहता है उसका कितना पावर कंजम्पन होता है ट्वेंटी अच्छा ये बताइए फैन में ज्यादा इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कंजम्पन होती है कि एसी में ज्यादा कंजम्पन होता है एसी में ज्यादा होता है अच्छा और बल्ब में ज्यादा होती है कि फैन में ज्यादा होती है अच्छा ठीक है तो अगर मान लीजिए कि आपको जो प्रेस है आप एक घंटा चलाएंगे उससे इतनी बिजली खर्च होगी कि आपका जो चालीस वाट का बल्ब है उसको पच्चीस घंटे चलाओगे ट्वेंटी फाइव ठीक है ना तो अभी आपको समझ में पड़ेगा कि किसकी कैपेसिटी ज्यादा है किसी कम ए में ज्यादा होता है टू वाट तक के आते हैं 2500 सौ वाट के आते हैं 1500 सौ हजार वाट के मिनिमम होते हैं ठीक है ना मतलब एक एसी को आप एक घंटा चलाओगे तो उसमें दो यूनिट भी खर्च हो सकती है एक यूनिट भी खर्च सकती है उसकी कैपेसिटी कितने कितने टन का एसी है उसके पास ठीक है तो हम ये बता रहे थे कि जब हम अपना इलेक्ट्रिसिटी प्रोडक्शन के लिए आपको न्यूक्लियर फ्यूल सिर्फ दो बंडल ट्वेंटी सेवन के जी आप न्यूक्लियर फ्यूल चाहिए न्यूक्लियर बंडल है इसके अंदर ये जो आप देख रहे हैं ना इसके अंदर यूरेनियम के पैलेट्स रहते हैं इधर पे ठीक है और इसके लिए 700 टन आपको कोल की जरूरत पड़ेगी सी डिफरेंस अब ये 700 टन कोल लगता है जनरेशन के लिए तो आप देखिए इसका स्टोरेज का कितना आपको अरेंजमेंट करना पड़ेगा ट्रांसपोर्ट अभी जो हमारी जितनी भी कोल माइंस है ना सबके ईस्टर्न साइड में है इंडिया के ईस्टर्न पार्ट में अब मुंबई जैसी जगह पे कोल माइन्स वगैरह या वेस्टर्न साइड में राजस्थान वगैरह में कोल माइन्स नहीं है तो आपको इतना ज्यादा कोयला है कितना बल्क में कोयला है आपको ट्रांसपोर्ट करना पड़ेगा ट्रेन से ठीक है ना उसमें भी एनर्जी लगती है स्टोरेज का प्रॉब्लम है ठीक है सो एज आई टोल्ड दैट आई हैड बीन वर्किंग इन न्यूक्लियर एनपीसी एंड न्यूक्लियर पावर कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया लिमिटेड विच इज अ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंटरप्राइज विच इज इन डिजाइन कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड ऑपरेशन ऑफ न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट इट इज मेनी कंपनी मेनी कैपेबिलिटीज इन वन इट इज इन दाइट साइट सिलेक्शन साइटिंग डिजाइन कंस्ट्रक्शन कमीशनिंग ऑपरेशन अब फर्दर चेंजेस ऑपरेशन से मेंटेनेंस एंड प्लांट लाइफ एक्सटेंशन वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट एवरीथिंग वी हैव गॉट कैपेबिलिटी ओके एंड दिस इज रिएक्टर बिल्डिंग एज आई इनफॉर्म दिस कैरेंडिया अवर रिएक्टर वेसल इज कैप्ट इन रिएक्टर बिल्डिंग सो रिएक्टर बिल्डिंग इज सो रोबस्ट दैट ए स्मॉल एयरप्लेन इफ इट स्ट्राइक्स विद दैट वन एंड देन शॉक वेब्स आर देयर सिस्मिक इम्पैक्ट आर देयर फ्लडिंग एज देयर विद दिस वन इट रिमेन ट अब न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट वर्ल्ड वाइड ऑलमोस्ट फोर फिफ्टी रिएक्टर्स आर ऑपरेटिंग प्रेजेंटली एंड अब डिजाइन इज वेरी रोबस्ट डिफेंस इन डेप्थ फिलोसफी आर फॉलोइंग डिफेंस इन डेप्थ वे आर वन सिस्टम शुड बी देयर दे आर वी आर पुटिंग थ्री सेफ्टी सिस्टम फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू ड्राइव अ कार देन यू हैव गॉट लेग ब्रेक इज देयर सो इफ सपोज देर आर देर सम पॉसिबिलिटी रिमोट पॉसिबिलिटीज आर देयर दैट लेग ब्रेक में फेल देन वी हैव गॉट हैंड ब्रेक्स Stand by. You can put hand brake. Okay, so it is safer. So like that in nuclear power plant, primary shutdown system is there, secondary shutdown system is there, emergency poor cooling system is there. Various systems are there. That first of all, possibility of failure of one system is very less because it's so robust, so technologically advanced. But still, redundancy is there. Means more than one systems are kept there. That uh, ultimately, 
to to uh, in the design philosophy of a nuclear power plant three things are kept in mind three things are philosophy is there cooling of the core reactor should be cooled all the time control of the reactivity that reactivity whatever is generated it should be controlled okay and third one is that uh, our uh, uh, containment uh, of control of the reactor means whenever you want you should be able to reduce the power you should be able to shut down the plant everything should be there it should be automatically within seconds within second it should happen okay it is all um, automatic type of system so the design philosophy these things are taken care or in all the nuclear power plants worldwide is a common thing okay so this is defense in depth and diversity and redundancy as i told that uh, that uh, for example uh, from here uh, this place you have to go to play say a cricket match i uh, say at uh, 1 pm okay so say one is captain and one is the vice captain if both of them go by local train okay then suppose local train uh, stops because of some problem then you will not be able to reach that uh, your destination so what will happen one person should go by bus other person should go by train so this is what is called our this is called diversity diverse principle okay so nuclear power plant they are based on different principle natural principle or in other other things also this is diversity and then redundancy redundancy more than one system as i told handbrake and leg brake okay redundancy is there and fail safe system means it should fail in the safer direction one example see this i am i am telling in very brief and very simple uh, right so that actually that fail safe means where you are driving a car and brake fails then what will happen there are possibility of accident even if handbrake is there if it also suppose fail so but fail safe system that it should fail in the safer direction in normal life does not happen if you are somebody is driving a car and if brake fails then you will not be able to stop the brake but in nuclear power plants the design features are like that that if something fails then it that automatically brake will apply in a car instead of not applying the brake and running the car that brake will automatically apply and driver with the steering he will take the vehicle into the corner and stop there that is fail safe failing in the safer direction and then highest quality and safety is kept there robust regulatory mechanism uh, a atomic energy regulatory board is there it monitors it gives license to the nuclear plant operators it gives license to the operating plant that okay i have seen it i have seen your document i have seen your uh, working procedure now i give you license for say next 5 years i he interviews person he takes written exam and he there this is nuclear power plant operators they are the actually cream of our country they are the highly intelligent and educated person and their training is so robust Th those persons are able to operate the nuclear power plants graduate engineers so now i come to the radiation actually that in, from the nuclear power plant radiation to the public in the fence boundary of the uh, uh, villagers and nearby it is very minimum so uh, i will tell you actually from the natural background also you get radiation up 2400 microsieverts per year okay because uh, in our earth crust lot of radiation it is radio nucleate substance are there red radon 222 radon 224 and many other are there so even if you are sitting inside this room or you are walking outside from the cosmic rays also you get lot of radiation so in an average one person worldwide gets 2004 abhi let us forget about the microsieverts this much unit otherwise also you are getting theek hai and from the nuclear power plant public they can get 1000 units okay but act in actual this is the figure of that in our different plant uh, our say rawat bhata plant kalpakkam plant tarapur various plants are there they get only fraction of this one only so it is insignificant this per, this is from the natural background you get this is the permissible limit but from the nuclear power plants in 2017 and it is not done by my company it is not done by npcl it is done by independent body which is the uh, uh, independent body which is not control of our thing so here wise they collect sample of the different matrix say water and air and grass and meat everywhere they collect sample and they measure radiation and they put monitors also so this one is very minimum okay so that so nuclear power plant actual data of to the public uh, radiation data is very minimum so we need not to worry about it 
So this is another thing, radiation. You know radiation, what is radiation? Okay, we have read. Okay. So, so from the sun and different uh, our stars, we get whatever, we still get radiation. They are called cosmic radiation. Okay. And then they interact with the cosmic radiation, interact with the particles of the environment. Then cosmogenic radiation, another secondary radiation is formed. So from the from the cosmic radiation, you get 390 units in a year. Okay. Achha, this is very uh, interesting thing that uh, everywhere radiation is there. If you eat banana, if you eat one banana every day for one year, then you get 36 microsievert. Then also you get radiation. So I'm not scaring you, you know, stop banana. Because you stop um, eating banana, you take milk, milk also has radiation. Everything has radiation, but it is not harmful to us because we have become used to it. We have been taking it because it, 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 our body absorbs and no harmful effects cause this one. Okay. And then from the brick wall, because as I told that 70 units you get, you get x-ray, then 100 units up with one chest x-ray, you get 100 units of radiation. And then when you go for CT scan, then you get 10,000 microsieverts. So that is why when we go for x-ray, when it is absolutely necessary, then only doctor prescribe x-rays or CT scan. In a CT scan, it is actually uh, 100 times more radiation you get. Okay. So in a nuclear power plant, that radiation, whatever waste, nuclear waste is generated, it is very minimum. So suppose in one house, they use for one continuously for 25, 25 years electricity from a nuclear power plant. So whatever radiation, whatever nuclear waste will be generated, it will be very small. Okay. From the fission, whatever radio nucleates are generated, it will be very enormous. It is uh, vitrified and stored permanently. So the different merits of this one. For example, if you would uh, burn wood, then one unit, one kilowatt hour means one unit. And then you, one coal, then three unit of electricity is produced. But when one kg of uranium, 50,000 units of electricity is generated. Okay, as I told 27 uh, kg of uranium is equivalent to 700 tons of coal. Okay, and then area, as I told that uh, our, uh, area required for a nuclear power plant or thermal power plant is, is only two to four kilometers square okay but and but for solar panels and all those things for uh, equivalent amount of thousand megawatt you need 20 to 50 kilo, uh, square kilometer of area and for the our our solar our this one wind it is further 150 to 150 square kilometer of uh, area is required because very as i told they are very low in intensity source so large area is required nowadays government is planning that uh, instead of creating solar panel in the earth on the uh, on the uh, she on the sea uh, shore other places they, they will make it that area, that can be area can be utilized uh, this i have already covered that uh, global warming and uh, greenhouse effect and all those this effect happened anyway people say that the greenhouse effect Everybody, we have read no greenhouse effect. Achha. Tab ne padha hai? So why it is called greenhouse effect? Aap why not red house, um, blue house, uh, yellow house? Why it is called greenhouse? Aap bataiye, green shirt pehne hai? Bataiye. <laughs> Kya ho gaya? Malum hai greenhouse. Aapne suna ho na greenhouse. Kabi aapne socha hai isko greenhouse kyon bolte hai? Why not red house? बता सकता है कोई why it is called greenhouse नहीं है so probably because it's like methane is a greenhouse gas so it's actually no why it is greenhouse no मैं simple तो अभी बिल्कुल simple है कि why it is हाँ बताइए आप बताइए why it is greenhouse when we go to a plant life in nursery the plants are kept in a room under the green shade which does not let heat to escape Excellent. there are such gases in the atmosphere too which doesn't let Excellent. our uh, heat to escape from Excellent. our earth very surface very so big hands for him very nicely we have so so what we have told us that we go to nursery so we have seen that the green glasses kept there why it is kept there like green what happens 
from the sun sun uh, sun rays comes there it warms the enclosed area and whatever heat is generated because of the sunlight it remains inside the enclosure green, this green house so that that is required for the growth of the plant for example if you are sitting in a car inside the car you close the our uh, uh, glasses then after some time then you find that uh, this carms have become very hot inside that the environment has become very outside it is maybe better inside there so it is also example of greenhouse because inside so that is what is happening in a greenhouse effect from the see uh, that uh, our carbon dioxide methane nitrogen oxides in in the car in, in air around 20.1 20.8% uh, is oxygen remaining 79% is nitrogen and carbon dioxide is very minimum uh, less than 0.1% uh, okay and other gases also there methane and methane and other things sorry about this one our uh, helium and other gases are very minimum so mean is this one but when carbon dioxide concentration goes on increasing in the environment what will happen it mixes with the air and then it is the property of carbon dioxide methane other gases which we call greenhouse because from the sun rays our earth gets warm up and this warming up then had this uh, greenhouse effect not there then this would have gone into the environment back and our earth temperature would have been constant but because of the carbon dioxide because of this enclosure it is getting trapped so it is making it warmer that is why the glacier is melting that is why our uh, this was sea level is uh, increasing okay you got my point no okay so uh, so it is leading to climate change and other effects okay so these are our nuclear power plants where in country 22 number of nuclear power plants are operating with 600 7780 megawatt capacity okay you can visit all can visit visitors are allowed there maybe of 15 years or less age may not be allowed for more than that definitely in some area they can definitely visit whatever i am telling uh, that you can confirm from there that how clean atmosphere is there how confidently people are working how safe it is so this is our nuclear power plant map in our country so uh, across the country everywhere you find that many nuclear power plants are operating and many are in operation many are under construction many are planned okay see panoramic view of a nuclear power plant this is our kaga uh, nuclear power plant which is in uh, karnatak they are four units are op operating two units are under construction this is our kakrapara atomic power station this is naro atomic power plant see clean and green okay. so here i will end my presentation almost one hour i have completed so so what is the take home message the electricity is a very versatile form of uh, energy and we need it definitely we need it we we cannot imagine that we go back again to the period uh that the electricity is not there but we have to use elect uh, generate electricity with the clean sources which does not cause harm to the environment and whatever uh, changes whatever developments are uh, developments are taking place in the world it should be sustainable development okay so what is sustainable development sustainable development is a term in environment what is sustainable development anybody knows what is sustainable development see it means with the human activity whatever changes you make on our mother earth those changes with the nature should be able to absorb those thing and revert back to that one for example if you burn some uh, match stick and carbon dioxide is released so this carbon dioxide release should be absorbed by the plants and it should convert back to the oxygen so that would that should not permanently impact the environment so this is sustainable development so we should use sustainable development we uh, technology which does not harm to the environment our coming generation are actually they are uh, they remain uh, thankful to us that they, they have not spoiled our earth for their own uh, uh, selfish uh, views because of selfish acts so 
carbon footprint means the generation of carbon dioxide to the environment has to be reduced. As I told that our country, we have planned by 2017, carbon dioxide emission uh, has to be uh, made zero and renewable. So ultimately what will happen? So what, what is the means there? So ultimately thermal 50% presently is there. Renewables and uh, wind, solar, hydro power plants, hydro, as I told that we have exploited the most of them. So many countries, there is uh, they're uh, generating hydroelectric power plants, operating hydroelectric power plants. Uh, but in our, there are not many scope is there. Okay. So we have to depend solar and wind technology has to develop. Okay. In time will come that uh, solar and wind will play a very important role. Now around 28% capacity, uh, install capacity is by solar and wind and they, that will go in, in go, going on increasing. So, but uh, they are presently not uh, a stable source of this thing, they are intermittent. So we have to technology, we have to uh, make that we can store electricity, we can whenever need, we can uh, use them. So gradually use of thermal, but with the coal, we have to reduce dependency and we have to replace with the nuclear. The nuclear can play uh, equivalent role, which is being played by the thermal power plants presently. So that is the take home message. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think we need slides here so to technically put up some of the facts and data where you can clearly make out that uh, justifying the title of the talk, nuclear power and inevitable law. I think some of the things were shown. Let me ask how many of you uh, remember some of the slides I uh, have noted down. Some of you might have. Uh, meanwhile, we have some people online also. Uh, I'll request uh, those. Uh, who are available and if they have some question before we move back to auditorium, they can ask one or two questions we can take from uh, online those who are available. Rajesh, can you? Very good. Good. So uh, you are noting down, or you just remember that? Good. And from uh, from nuclear, nuclear? Two hundred MeV. Yeah, very nice. Million times more. So that, that's the idea. Means uh, when you see something, if you remember, perhaps uh, uh, you remember it for a longer, longer duration, and that means that this is just one thing. And uh, you have also shown. 27 kg one bundle. Actually, that bundle maybe later on you can see here in our gallery also. Yeah, it is. There. And uh, 700 tons of coal. So you just you can just imagine. It's not only coal using that, but when you mine that coal, what happens to that area? It is filled with water. So there are some ecological effects also, seismical effect you can say. So all those things are really having concerns. So. I think one of the option is uh, nuclear, but definitely still, uh, yes. we are just three. That may be the maybe may ultimate option <laughs> because yeah. our resources we are oil. See, ultimately in our uh, global warming, whatever the uh, yesterday only I was uh, recollecting it that in the USA, that uh, impact of global warming, that number one is automobile. It is around 29 percent. It is polluting environment. 28, 27 percent is by the thermal power plants by the burning of coal. So it is a major, almost it is 60%. Okay. So definitely we have to control that thing. So by the clean sources, so definitely nuclear will play a very important role in controlling the uh, carbon dioxide emission. Okay, we have online visitor, I think, the uh, audience. Uh, Rajesh, ask them if they can ask questions. Can we listen to the question? Yes, yes, just speak. Connect. Please ask her the question. Please ask her question. Yes, sir, I wanted to ask how does strong and weak nuclear force affect fission and fusion? Actually, see, our, uh, the, as I, um, you might have studied uh, in your school that there is a binding energy. 
in a nuclear so okay so binding binding energy is there which keeps the uh, higher the um, binding energy it keeps the uh, nucleus stable but unstable sources when you bombard it with a nuclear uh, say atom then uh, this our critical energy it, be it becomes larger so that uh, a nucleus become unstable so it is the nucleons they keep themselves uh, elect uh, the neutron to neutron neutron to proton and uh, they keep the keep them stable this thing so this is this is uh, the reason that uh, some uh, nucleus are stable some are unstable some are uh, breaks uh, and they gives uh, spontaneous uh, uh, emissions of the radiation okay okay we have to tell here hello sir uh, i have a question that uh, how much time does our radiation took place to the to get uh okay. to become uh, that uh, fatal and uh, be, uh, harmful no sir how much uh, time does it take to get uh, mixed with your nature and harm, how harmful it can be for humans ha uh, that is what i am saying actually see see small radiation as i told small radiation it is not harmful when it goes increases dose increases the radiation dose increases for example when nucleus some resistor has taken place so their radiation dose was very very high very very high so actually there are some different uh, limits are there that uh, uh, very small radiation dose actually it, it, because as i told that from the natural background itself we get uh, 2400 micro sieverts per year so it is not affecting us cells our body cells are able to absorb and new cells are built up okay but as radiation dose increases it is not the question of time it is the how much radiation dose one gets and higher the radiation dose then some nausea takes place and some um, uh, temporary health effects takes place but when it is very very high radiation dose that some limit is there 10 to the power 6 red exactly figure i am not able to recollect then only harmful effect on the body of the human body takes place in fact uh, this uh, exposure to radiation is cumulative whatever you are exposed right from your birth up to till you grow or maybe till you die it is always added it remains with you so whenever you are actually i'll just share one incident when we go to you know hospital we taking some patient for x ray or for some many people enter to the room we should not <laughs> If, even if the hospital staff doesn't say you should not go inside because you are unnecessarily getting exposing x rays as sir has already told them by x ray you are getting 100 micro sievert in just one shot so if you say in lifetime you are getting maybe 10 times 12 times so that is added to your that's what happens in and means uh, nuclear Correct. power plant also everybody so, has okay, exactly. uh, that uh, pld meter if you exceed certain limit they have shifted to other place so they, they are, are allowed to work so there are limits in one year how much radiation dose you can receive in a lifetime how much dose you can get in a one in a single shot how much radiation dose on that one it has been already research has been done and studies are there that uh, which can be cause some harmful effect to the human body so be aware yeah. next time unnecessarily dose uh, dose, dose is to be kept we have a principle of alara as low as reasonably achievable whenever you can yeah yeah so in case of someone to see use a high dose of radiation poisoning what is the certain treatment that needs to be followed a protocol followed is there any kind of medication received or made in the medical field yet has it been discussed no actually sub see there are two type of thing one is contamination some radioactive yes, substance is there outside yes, and your body gets contaminated with that one so there are certain treatment that uh, by Uh, this one is that our loose contamination which is our to body even to the last stage our it can be um, by surgery that radio back to contamination can be removed but if you have received some radiation dose so as such it has gone inside the body so as such i don't think any such treatment is there which can uh, uh, reduce the impact of that one with the next who is mike now yeah. mike yeah please ask your question yeah stand up are private companies allowed to make uh, power plants which one in india it is not it is a, as i told that npcl which is a, a totally owned by government of india 100% stake is by the government of india so private players are not allowed presently to operate nuclear power plant but in worldwide there are many private operators 
which are uh, in the USA and in the other places where private players they contribute, they make new product. But India, it is not allowed. India, it is not there. Next. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. So now it's time to put your hands together and thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. All the schools, after a very, very long time, we had a audience here for attending the lecture because during nearly two and a half years time, during the lockdown period, we were meeting online. Many of you had joined personally and many of you uh, participated in many of our workshops also. Uh, maybe if you are not aware what kind of programs we did, we just go through our Facebook page and you'll know what we've done during the lockdown period. Wonderful workshops and wonderful participation from all of you. But it's always better to have you all here. It's, it gives really great energy as so rightly said that when you have people around and you have interactive audience, it becomes really a uh, very encouraging uh, situation. So uh, let me thank all these schools who participate, who participate in this lecture, you are offline as well as online. We were individually participating also who participated in this. I thank NPCL also for uh, collaborating with us for this particular program. And uh, I hope everybody has shared their emails. Um, maybe the schools, school authorities will send the uh, digital certificates of the participants to the school and the school will share it further with you all. Please, uh, if the teachers and uh, representatives from the school are there, kindly ensure that all the students who are who have participated here today with you, uh, you have given us their names so that we can send them the digital certificates. Now, uh, a big thank you to all of you and a request to all of you to join us for the refreshment which is arranged outside. I'll request you to go uh, school-wise. I firstly request Saraswati Mandir School 